Hi everybody, my name is Katherine Enberg and I'm here to talk to you about building an urban free food forest in the city of Troy, New York. So bringing a food forest to the city of Troy would help serve the underserved and underprivileged in many ways. A city with well-planned and well-managed green infrastructure becomes more resilient, sustainable, and equitable in terms of nutrition and food security, poverty alleviation, livelihood improvement, climate change mitigation and adaptation, disaster risk reduction, and ecosystem conservation. So first we have to discuss what the definition of a food forest is. Permaculture is the act of tending to the natural order of the land, becoming integrated with it in the simplest and purest way possible. It is a system, one which mimics the natural ecosystems we see in nature for the benefit of all. The Tree Cities of the World program is an international effort to recognize cities and towns committed to ensuring that their urban forests and trees are properly maintained, sustainably managed, and duly celebrated, and is sponsored by the Arbor Day Foundation. The City of Troy, New York has taken steps over the last decade to be included on that list. To be recognized as a tree city, a community must meet five core standards that illustrate a commitment to caring for its trees and forests. They need to establish responsibility, set the rules, know what they have, allocate resources, and celebrate their achievements. I decided to address the first implementation of this project for the city of Troy. Troy is very progressive when it comes to environmental issues. They have a sustainability committee, there's a solar farm being built in South Troy, and they have several water treatment facilities. During the last four years, they have worked to revitalize the city's seven-mile waterfront uh, in hopes to improve resiliency against the impacts of climate change and provide new amenities to attract visitors. Projections were made by the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority for changes in mean annual climate change and extreme events. Model-based distributions for temperature, precipitation, sea level rise, and extreme events were created based on a global climate model simulation. And these areas marked in yellow here were areas that the report um, showed that would be impacted by projected climate change issues and would benefit from climate change mitigation. For cities to achieve their potential, it will be important to reduce the expected pressures resulting from the explosive rural or urban migration by balancing sustainable urban development alongside sustainable rural development. A community forest is a community managed forested area that provides benefits to the local community, such as timber harvest management, training, educational programs for adults and children, and recreational activities. Several specific ecosystem services that could be relevant for evaluating current and future urban green spaces include plant biodiversity, food production, microclimate control, soil infiltration, carbon sequestration, visual quality, recreation, and social capital. Food forests are living proof that industrial agriculture is not the only way to feed the world. In fact, we now recognize that conventional agricultural practices are a major contributor towards climate change, environmental destruction, and desertification. Monocropping devastates ecosystems by forcing the land to grow only one thing over extensive acreage over much of the country. This destroys topsoil with yearly deep tilling, pollutes our water and earth with synthetic petrochemicals, 
fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides, and results in fragile, unhealthy, and unnatural landscapes that depend on a staggering amount of inputs in order to operate. On the other hand of the spectrum lies the food forest. It's an example of a regenerative, resilient, and time-tested method of growing food. Principles of permaculture can be viewed as activities occurring in one of seven layers that each emphasizes a different function. The first layer is the canopy. This is the highest layer of the seven. Cherry and apple trees, nut trees, and nitrogen fixing trees are all common in large food forests. The second layer is the sub canopy or large shrub layer. This layer is populated by apple, plum, peach, pear, uh, and pomegranate and other fruit, fruit trees. The third layer is the shrub layer. The shrub layer has things like blueberry, raspberry, and blackberries in it. The fourth layer is the herbaceous layer and it has things like artichokes, asparagus, beans, and beets, and sunflowers in it. These provide great habitat for food as well as are beneficial for insects. The fifth layer is the ground cover layer. The ground cover function is performed by many of the plants in the previous layer as well as plants like mint, lemon balm, strawberries, valerian, yarrow, and oregano. The sixth layer is the underground layer with things in it like onions, potatoes, horseradish, burdock, chicory, and valerian. It also contains fungi like mushrooms which support the health of the ecosystem and are good for people to eat. The seventh layer is the vertical or climber layer. It's home to some of the most far expanding plants uh, such as hop, grape, and kiwi and running beans. The initial groundwork for this project um, was done to learn about public acceptance. Um, and it was done through interviews that were in situ, so in live situations. In an attempt to encourage the people to focus on climate change issues, a creative approach to data collection was required in order to survey um, the largest section of the local population in one area possible. Out of the box thinking utilizes a cross disciplinary approach through the use of sociological methods for data collection in um, in person conversations. So we ask questions about the overall spiritual nature of the community, the most common issues of struggle, um, and what environmentally friendly projects that would not take away people's perceived personal liberties um, were discussed. So I discussed these issues with members of the local music scene. Um, there were about 56 people that I interviewed over the course of a two year span during 2011 to 2013. These people were interviewed because they're representative of many segments of the Troy, New York population. And they contain people that have various backgrounds that one may not normally find interacting in a social nature due to their upbringing or current job description. The scene brings together all walks of life uh, in unity through the love of music. And so it gave me a really good cross section of people to interview about what this project could do. The results of my surveying showed a common theme emerging in areas of food security for Troy, New York. All the respondents were extremely excited about participation in the building of an urban free food forest. However, they remained skeptical um, on the city or person's um, ability to maintain a food forest system. So they were curious as to who was going to actually be able to implement such a project. So most of my project collaborations during the last year have been 
with a local activist um, doing public outreach about permaculture methods. So community gardens are widespread in the capital region and I have a local farmer, uh, Spree Squire of the Black Goat Homestead in Schoharie County and fellow Unity student Meg Cannell as well as Joanne Farrell and we were all going to get together and host a public event including talks about soil, local hobby farming, and sustainable gardens and forests. Uh, we had the permits issued for an event at the Riverside Park Pavilion in Rensselaer, but we had to postpone um, that event following new COVID-19 guidelines that were sent down by the governor. We were able to create some deliverables for public outreach, and we were able to propagate a whole bunch of um, different plant species to hand out to participants in the event. I was able to reach out with many local groups such as Street Soldiers in Troy, um, the New York State DEC, and Capital Roots Garden Center on permaculture methods. So future project collaborations will probably be ongoing with Capital Roots. Um, I determined that they were the best source to get uh, food forest built as they are uh, a nonprofit community service organization that's been helping residents with community gardening and healthy food access for about 40 years. The timeline for the implementation of a food forest is a long-reaching project. A five-year planting plan once the project build phase begins seems reasonable. Public outreach and education can be continued during the entire building phase. So in conclusion, to ensure the sustainability and security of a viable food, water and nutrition system for a growing urban population, many key factors influencing the food supply need to be addressed. Utilization of permaculture methods as a solution to address equity issues as well as climate change mitigation solution would be very beneficial for the city of Troy, as well as those surrounding cities in the capital district of Cohoes and Albany. These cities have potential to utilize permaculture ideas in their park planning and development through their community garden organizations. Here's a list of the references that I used for the project. And if anybody has any further questions about this project, I am happy to answer them.